right. I've started recording. I think it's going to record locally. I'll have to upload it later uh, to everybody. But we had just gotten to the point where we were letting our, our kids like do sleepovers and stuff that week between Christmas and New Year's. And my, my older daughter is, um, well, she's almost 14. She's 13 and like three quarters. Um, and she's homeschooled or she actually goes to an online school. So, so it's like, it's worse than homeschool because she actually has school and there's actually teachers and guidance counselors, but there's no snow days. She's stuck in her room doing homeschool all the time. And, um, but she had recently reconnected with a bunch of her, her friends from when she went, went to uh, the public school. And anyway, they, they, they had this big plan for a sleepover the week between Christmas and New Year's. And, uh, and then not all the kids could come on the same day. So she did two sleepovers back to back. And, um, and so we did the first one, went off without a hitch. The second one, there was a bunch of girls there and um, I got up in the morning, I went downstairs, I made a bunch of noise, made coffee and stuff. And I realized, oh shit, there's a bunch of girls sleeping in the living room. I should probably be quiet. And so I snuck back up the back stairs, drank my cup of coffee. And then I'm like, this is stupid because I got to be quiet in the bedroom too, because my wife's still sleeping. And so I, I get in the car, I come to, come to my office here at WPI and um, my wife texts me. She's like, hey, did you see, uh, did you see so-and-so? And I was like, well, yeah, she was sleeping on the sofa when I left this morning, but she's not here now. And she's not in Michelle's room. And I, can you text her mother? So I text the mother and I'm like, hey, uh, did, did she get home okay? Is it, oh yeah, sorry. I, I had to go pick her up because I tested positive for COVID this morning. <laughs> and then there was a bunch of texts back and forth. And she's like, oh, the doctor thinks it's a false positive and nobody else in the family has tested positive. And, and we think we're all okay. And, um, and then on the Sunday after, I get a text from the mother and the father of the girl that came the day before and like, yeah, she's sick and I have COVID. <laughs> but we managed to get through it. Um, our family so far has not tested positive for anything other than um, a lack of having too much fun. It kind of sucks to be, well, you guys know that, right? You've lived through the last two years also. So uh, my, my goal is to have this class actually be some fun for us and to, uh, to allow us to, uh, to learn something useful. I, um, I would like to introduce the TA for the class. Mr. TA, would you introduce yourself now that I see that you're on camera? Oh. Sorry, some Wi-Fi issues. Yeah, no problem. I, I couldn't connect my external monitor today, so. <laughs> So, so go for it. Hayden is our TA for the class. I had designed the class thinking that there would be no TA. It was a pleasant surprise to find out that we had a TA to work with us. So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna work him to the bone, right? That's the thing. Well, I don't know if that's what we talked about. Get our, get our money's worth out of him. Uh, but Hayden, <laughs> why don't you introduce yourself to the class and tell them how to get in touch with you. Hey guys, so yeah, my name's Hayden. Uh, I'm a PhD student, first year here at WPI. Uh, I did my undergrad here as well in mechanical engineering. Um, I'm located in the shops. It's kind of hard to find uh, the room that my office is in. So the best way to reach me uh, is just my email. Um, and I can post that. We'll put it in the, uh, in the Canvas site. Yeah. So you guys, that's the best way to reach me. I usually respond pretty quickly. Um, definitely within like 24 hours. Uh, unless you email me like on a Sunday morning or something. I might not respond right away. Um, but yeah, reach out for me for any help or uh, assistance or something in the labs, um, like especially like individual projects that you guys are working on or any course related work as well. And, um, and yeah, so as, as I said, I sort of designed the class um, thinking there would be no TA. Uh, so it was a nice, nice surprise to find out that, that we had a TA. And um, I want to, uh, I want to spend part of this, this morning explaining what my plan is for the class, what my expectations are um, for the class, for, for myself and for you guys as we go through this. Um, and then I've got some exercises I want you guys to work on independently for a little while. 
Um, and then after you do that independent, we're going to independent exercise, we're going to get back together as a, uh, as a group and discuss the results of that. Um, and basically what I want to do is I want to use today to plan the class with you instead of for you so that we make sure that you get out of the class, the things that you're expecting the things that you want to learn. Uh, so let me quickly uh, see if I can share my screen. I know I can share my screen. Share. And all right, so now you see me logging into my email or something or logging into my YouTube. You guys see that? I can't hear anyone. Yes. Somebody say yeah. something. All right, perfect. Um, let me go over here to Canvas. And let me go to student view. Make sure that you make sure that I see what you see. Let me go to home. All right, so I get the home page set up here so that the syllabus is the home page, but that it will do announcements up here at the top. Uh, there's a thing in Canvas where you can get the announcements emailed to you. I'll, I'll try to do communication, like sort of class broad communication through announcements to get it recorded and make sure that we can refer back to it. Um, if you get the announcements emailed to you, I think you might get the text of the announcement in the email. Is that true? Yeah, I see some people nodding their head. Um, yeah, so if I edit the text afterwards because I realize I was an idiot, um, you won't get a new email that says I edited the text. So the one that's in the Canvas site is the accurate text to the best of my knowledge, not the one you got in your email. So if something doesn't make sense, uh, check the Canvas site. And if it still doesn't make sense, then reach out to myself or Hayden to, uh, to get clarification. What, uh, what you may have noticed in the email you got yesterday talking about the first two classes being on Zoom is that I had the wrong dates for the first two classes. Uh, I had the right days, but the wrong dates. So I fixed that. Uh, but if we go down and we take a quick look at the uh, at the syllabus here. Um, the first thing I put in here was the class description as copied from the course catalog. Um, I, I put that in here because it was clearly written by a committee and it was clearly written 20 years ago. Uh, and the, the course is about computer aided manufacturing and that has changed over the last 20 years just a little bit. Uh, but the, uh, the course description hasn't been updated in all that time. So I wanna to use today's class to figure out the things from the course description we wanna focus on and if there's anything else we wanna to add to that. But if you haven't yet read the course description, basically like make that part of a, like a first week quiz is have questions about the course description to see if the people in the class know what the class is about. Um, I'm not gonna do that this time because I think the course description kind of sucks too. Um, if we look over here at expectations, so I've listed some of my expectations over here, it shows that your expectations are to be determined. That's part of the activity today is we're going to come up with a list of what your expectations are for the class, what you expect to learn, how much work you expect to put in, those, those kind of things. I do want to talk about the grading here. Um, and this is something that I've never done before, uh, and I'm trying it out on you guys. So you're, uh, what, what's the word, guinea pigs? You're the canary that the miners take down into the mine, and if the canary dies, then the miners know they have to leave, right? So that's, that, that's the plan here. Um, it, uh, there's a famous saying that 80% of success is showing up, and I decided to base the grading scheme on that famous saying. 80% of success in the class is gonna be based on showing up or based on completing the assignments. Uh, and that means completing the assignments on time, not just completing the assignments, right? I could wait till the last day and have you do all the stuff all at once. Um, and in my mind, that, that never works. I, I understand that, especially with COVID and stuff like that, that, that people may not be able to complete some of the assignments on time. And so if you need an exception, you need to, to reach out to me and explain that you need the exception. Um, it's way easier for you and way easier for me if you don't ask for an exception. Um, so try to complete the assignments on time. We'll go through what those assignments look like in, uh, in just a, a minute here. But it's uh, complete the assignments is 80% of the grade. 
complete a self-evaluation and each week I'm going to have you evaluate yourself and I'm going to have you evaluate your peers in both your peers in the class in general and your peers in your group. There's going to be uh, group assignments throughout the term here. So you'll evaluate your, your own effort. You'll evaluate your peers' efforts. Um, the, the peer evaluation, so that's your general evaluation during the class and your specific evaluation of the peers in your group of 10% of the grade. My evaluation will be 5% of the grade. So I'm trying to, I'm taking myself a little bit out of the equation other than at the design phase here in the, in the step where we, uh, where we create this. Um, the way it's gonna be organized is on Mondays and today's a Monday, right? You guys know today's Monday? Of course you know today's Monday, otherwise you wouldn't be in class today. Um, on Mondays, we're gonna start off with me giving a lecture style introduction of the topic for that week. Uh, it'll be 20 to 30 minutes uh, of me introducing, setting up the topic, and then we'll divide into our groups. And that's the other reason I wanna do this on Zoom is that you can actually break out of this Zoom you can go set up your own group Zoom and have, have a group meeting all together, or you guys can decide to be physically together as a group and, and join, the, join this Zoom all together either way. But we're gonna have a group activity based on the topic. Um, at the end of that group activity, you'll come back and report, each group will quickly report what the result was from the activity for their group. And then we'll have a class discussion on the topic <clears throat> That, that really is intended to determine what is it that we feel is important that we learn about this topic over the course of the week. Um, and we'll develop from that class discussion five independent things about the week's topic that we think are critical. We'll divide those five things up between the five groups that are gonna be in the class and assign you to then go out and research that and prepare a presentation for Thursday where you're going to report back to the class what you learned on that topic. Uh, they, they, uh, they say the best way to learn something is to teach it to somebody else. And so we're going to try to prove that that's true by having everybody learn enough about something to teach the rest of the class about that. Um, those assignments that I say you have to complete and get done is in between each presentation, there's gonna be a short quiz you'll do on Canvas. The quiz is three Likert scale questions. Let's go look at the first quiz. Uh, if I go here to assignments. And so that first quiz will be January 20th and group number one, nine o'clock. And I'm still logged in as the student. So if we take that quiz, um, so on a, on a scale of one to 10, rate the presentation quality. So you can say five. On that scale of one to 10, rate the presentation's relevance to the topic that was assigned to that group for, um, for, for teaching. So who, who's ever had a class where the professor didn't talk about the stuff in the course description? Raise, raise your hand in the uh, in the participants window or whatever. If you've ever taken a class and uh, in, in the class you found that the professor didn't really talk about the stuff the class was about. Is there raise your hand or there's there's some thumbs up? Yeah, do the thumbs up thing or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, that's that's a thing. I, I once had a tenured faculty member tell me that uh, they can make me teach it, but they can't make me teach it well. And, um, and it turns out that people tend to teach the thing that they, um, that they know something about. They, they tend to teach the thing that they like to talk about. I know I do it, uh, and I'm trying to avoid that in this class. So what's the relevance of the, uh, of the topic to, um, to what, they, uh, what they were assigned to do? So let's say they hit that on the nose. It's a 10 out of 10. Uh, what's the usefulness of the information they shared to you as a future reference? We'll say maybe that's a seven. Um, what's one question you have now that you've seen their presentation? How come I didn't know this before? This, this should be a, a good question. So since we don't have a topic yet, what's the, oh. Why is the syllabus so complicated? Right? 
that could be your question for today. Um, and one comment or piece of feedback for the presenters. You need to zip up your slide before presenting in public. Right? Could be the thing that you comment. I always, I know that when I'm in front of the class and I see people up in the back giggling and, and sharing a secret with each other, I always step behind the podium and check to make sure I haven't made that mistake. Um, all right, so those are your five questions. You take just a few seconds to, to, uh, to do that quiz. You'll submit it. And then the next group will presumably be ready to go. These quizzes are gonna be due at midnight, the um, midnight, the day of that class. So if you can't see the uh, see the presentations live, you still have time during the day to watch the uh, recordings of the presentations. If you can't be in class because you got the vid or something else, or maybe you just don't like getting up at nine o'clock in the morning and you'd rather go to class from your cozy, warm bed in your bedroom, I don't really care. Although I do prefer if you could be in a position where you could turn your camera on. That probably won't matter that much for Thursdays. Um, you can watch it live and still do it in the uh, live time. And if for some reason, you know, you're so sick that you actually can't do it, just let me know and we'll figure out how to make that up later. But I want to have the feedback come to people in real time. I want to have it. And it's both giving people feedback for what, how they did in their presentation, but it's also giving you feedback about where you stand in the grading. Right, so you'll know immediately what your grade is once you do all these quizzes, thanks to Hayden, because he's gonna go through on Friday mornings and make sure that all those essay questions are graded, right? All right, Yeah. yeah. Um, cool. So back over here to home syllabus. Um, all right, so uh, do the uh, group presentations, you'll do your things. Um, before the group presentations, you'll have a thing where you upload your presentation. That's due in the morning at eight o'clock, I think, on Thursday mornings. Everything else is due at midnight on Thursdays. Um, groups will have five to six people. Does that make sense? I think that that needs to change to six to seven people. Depends on how many people end up being in the class. I see we got 31 participants right now, so that'll work out to uh, six six people per group ish right five times six is 30 so maybe seven people in one group normally there's 35 people the the 35 spots the class had a wait list last time i checked so if people come in off the wait list we may get five groups of up to seven people seven people is a big group it's easy to get lost in a big group like that who who's had a project that they uh, they did with a big group and they were the person who got lost in that project that, that sort of hung out in the back, didn't do a whole lot of work. Yeah, I used to be that person a lot. I used to always be the person who volunteered, especially if it was like a, like a written report at the end and you get six different people writing sections of the report. If you've ever had to read one of those reports, they suck. So I used to be the person who volunteered to be the person who put all of the sections together and then wrote transitional stuff to make it sound good so that it sounded like it was all written by one person. It was calculated. That meant I didn't actually have to do any of the work. You get that, right? I had to wait till everybody else did their work and then I would copy and paste it to make it sound like one report. Now. The, the downside of being that person is if somebody doesn't do their section, you have to then write that because the whole team's expecting you to get the whole thing submitted. Um, but uh, it, it's it's tough to have a group of seven people, uh, but it's the only way to, to make presentations flow. So based on the numbers of people in the class, we want seven people per group. Only two to three people should be doing the physical presentation at the moment of the presentation. Um, the rest of the people can either be in the classroom watching or watching remote, especially uh, this gives us a chance, as long as the whole group doesn't get sick the same week, um, gives us a chance to get people through there. I do, however, want to see each person 
participate in two presentations throughout the term. So um, just to, I want everybody to be part of that um, presentation quality, relevance, usefulness, right? We went through that in the quiz. Um, and, and so that's it. What I want to do next, what time is it? 9.23, what, uh, I got a schedule for today. Oh, here's the course schedule. You can guys check that out. And, oh, and I said I was going to do this until 9.20. I went three minutes over. Damn. But we've got now 15 minutes for Q&A before we break into, uh, no, we're not going to actually form the, yeah, 15 minutes for Q&A before we have you guys go do, uh, do some online quizzes where I can collect some information from you. So what do you got? What are your questions for me? Uh, feel free to unmute and talk or type them in the chat. All right, I have a question for you. Has anybody tried to email me and not gotten a response? They sent you an email a couple of days ago. Um, a couple of days I, ago. I don't know if I got a response. You don't know. <laughs> so <laughs> so you, you check your email as regularly as I do is what you're saying? <laughs> um, if, uh, if you've emailed me and you think you should have gotten a response and you didn't get the response by like eight o'clock the next morning, send the message again. Um, if it's urgent, um, you can go to the website. You can find my, uh, my cell phone number, send me a text. Um, you can try to call me, it'll go to voicemail, but if you leave a message on the voicemail, you can leave a message if you feel like it, but you're better off sending a text because I check my voicemail left less often than I check my email. And I try to check my email every day at four o'clock and empty out that uh, email inbox daily at four o'clock. So if you, need, if you need feedback more quickly than that, um, go ahead and, and send me a text message. Um, the, uh, the message that you sent me a couple of days ago, is it something we can talk about in public or is it private? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just currently on the wait list for the class. Um, I, um, I could take the course. I would assume that you can take the course because it's not at capacity. Um, if you haven't gotten an automated message from the registrar yet, reach out to the registrar and find out. Because okay. supposedly Workday is taking care of that. And the capacity for the class is 35. And there's, I think there's only 31 people registered, 32 people registered. So you should be able to get in. If, um, if the registrar can't help you, reach back out again. And I'll see what I can do. But it's Thank supposed you. to be automated. And, and I know in A term, the automation was working. So, uh, and you should, do you have access to the Canvas site? No, I don't. I think I can change a setting in the Canvas site that gets you that access. Um, so that you can participate in the activities today. Um, All the way on the bottom right. Yeah, I think I need to exit the student view unless I already did. All right, um, so I don't see settings. So where the heck is the exit? There it is, all the way in the bottom right, leave student view. Thank you. Now I can go to settings. In settings and participation. That's not it. This is published. Actually, you know what? I can just add you to the Canvas site. That's easy. Um, what's your WPI username? P-A-Leach, L-E-A-C-H. 
P-A-L-E-A-C-H. Add as a student. Next. The following student has been added to the course. All right, so that does not mean you're enrolled in the course, but that means you can see the Canvas site. Anybody else needs to get added to Canvas? Speak up now or forever hold your peace. Or speak up at some later date. All right. Um, so yeah, make sure you figure out the registrar thing, but uh, we should be able to get you in the class because we're not yep. at capacity. Thank you. Um, the, uh, so the next thing I want us to do, unless somebody's got more questions, I hope that we'll have, uh, just to clear, no, groups will not change every week. Um, so the question, will groups change every week? No, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna do some activities today based on the results of the, uh, the quizzes that I have you guys do here in just a second. I'm gonna choose the groups. I'm gonna assign you to a group. Um, and then I intend for those groups to stay static throughout the term. If there is a, uh, if there is a conflict or if there is uh, if there's somebody that you know is registered for the class that you know you don't want to be in a group with, you can uh, email me before the end of the day today and tell me who that is, and I will do my best to avoid putting you in the group with them. Um, but uh, this is when we um, typically, unless we're, uh, unless we're founding a startup company, when we go work at a job and we, we get in a group to, uh, to work with some people, we get stuck in the group with the people that the company hired that they decided were going to be good for that task. We don't always get to choose our groups. Um, the, the exception, of course, is if you're the founder of a startup company, you get to choose who you hire, but then you also have to have cash on hand to pay them. So um, since, well, plenty of cash has changed hands in order to put you in this class, um, None of it comes to me, so you don't get to, well, not directly at least, so you don't get to choose which group you're in. Um, so I'm gonna pick the groups uh, and that sort of sets this up. What I wanna do, I'll go back to student view. And uh, if you guys can log into Canvas and you should have access to a device that can access the internet if you're on the Zoom. Um, so I hope you, you can do that. If you log into Canvas and go to assignments in the site, I would like you to take the, uh, the quizzes, intro topics one, two, three. Where the hell is four? Is it down at the bottom? All right, let me <coughs> exit student view for a second and make sure that four is published. It is, it's an undated assignment. Oh, I didn't put a due date. Well, let me fix the due date. Intro topics four, edit, do. Um, today. Ah. There. Now, if I go to student view, one, two, three, four, five. So if you do those in the order that they're listed here, um, I'm gonna be, it's, it's a, part of it is a data mining project for me. I want to get some information from you, uh, both about things that you're interested in learning in the class, um, things that I think the class might be about and how much interest you have in those things, how much knowledge you already have about those things. Some things about you um, that make you well suited to a particular topic or area, um, and um, and so I think it's it's four. Yeah, four is kind of interesting. I want you to go to this website, 16personalities.com, and I want you to go through the uh, the personality test. It gives it's a Myers Briggs personality test, and then when you're done with that, it's going to give you a result. That looks sort of like what's your type, what's your code, what's your role, and what's your strategy. Here's the result that I got when I took this uh, this test just like last week. <clears throat> and I want to use this information to uh, to sort the people into the different groups. And so when you get to four, that'll take you a little while to uh, to complete that. Um, and then five. 
I go back here, Intro Topics 5 is a little bit open-ended and, uh, and could take a while. So we may not complete the, uh, the fifth one by the end of the, the time limit. I think, I think I got on the schedule that we're gonna get back together I say in the schedule, we're going to get back together here as a group. So we'll get back together here as a group at about 10 after 10. Yeah, that makes sense. We get back together as a group here on the Zoom at about 10 after 10. I'm going to stay logged in. I'll mute myself and I'll monitor the chat. And I got a Bluetooth in my ear. So if you say something, I'll hear you too. Um, you can log off, log back in, or you can stay logged in. It's up to you while you do that. If you have a question, just pop it in the chat or uh, shout out and I'll hear you. Uh, and then at 1010, if you have been away, make sure you come back um, so that we can do that group discussion. It says here that we're gonna form groups at that time. I'm actually gonna wait to form the groups this evening. So we're gonna go, uh, we're gonna go straight into class discussion at that time, not form groups. So I'll go ahead and update the, the syllabus here too. That sound good to everybody? If not, let me know, either in the chat or send me a text message or whatever. I'm gonna go on mute. And
Did you say you wanted us to do quiz five as well? Uh, yeah, do quiz five. It just don't, if you're not finished with it by the time we run out, it'll be okay. We can finish it later. So you don't, you don't have to finish. I wasn't sure how long people would take to do that uh, Myers-Briggs test. So. Yeah, if you get it done now, you don't have to do it later. Okay, thank you.
I think almost everybody has uh, has finished up through quiz four. Let's see, twenty eight of twenty nine of you have submitted that. So uh, if you're that last person working on it, just go ahead and finish that up while we get started here. Um, but uh, while you were working on quizzes four and five. I was going through the results of one, two, and three, trying to make some sense out of it. So let me uh, share my screen again, and then let's talk about what we learned from the results of quizzes one, two, and three. Share the screen. This one. Share. And. Minimize that. Go over here to Excel. Quiz one first. And I think I've hidden everybody's names, so we're still all anonymous, not unanimous. Although it is pretty apparent here. Um, I just want to quickly go through the uh, the things we said we want to learn about in the class. So hoping we'll learn about coding for manufacturing products and devices, learn how to use different machines, uh, specifically when computerized processes are more efficient choices than manual processes, when to do CNC, when not to do it, um, how to use computer-aided manufacturing and CNC machines in order to produce better components for personal and academic projects. Uh, the class will be a failure if practical applications for a technique are not discussed. Um, condition, okay. Uh, gain as much solid understanding in coding and CNC machines as possible. How to manufacture things in an optimized way, whether the techniques cost minimization. Something an industrial engineer would talk about. Don't really have anything specific, but I'd like to gain more knowledge in manufacturing in general so I can apply it to my internship this summer. Uh, what computer aided manufacturing is and how it's done. Um, how to learn some software, or at least some hands on techniques for manufacturing. How to adequately maneuver through machine shops and learn more CAM software so I can be able to manufacture correctly. Manufacturing use machinery, especially using computers to control machinery and how it operates. Uh, took M1800 online, so didn't get a chance to be in the shop very much. Better understanding of PLCs and how sensors and machines communicate with them. Span previous knowledge on CAM. Uh, better understanding of computer controlled manufacturing operations. If I do not learn more about the equipment and how to use it, I will not be taking advantage of the opportunity that course provides. Uh, more about ladder logic, understanding machine processes, um, manufacturer processes that are automated to make, how to manufacture processes, how manufacturing processes are automated to make processes more efficient. Uh, everything I can about computer-aided manufacturing is will be extremely useful microcomputers for process monitoring and control. Um, not sure, but haven't taken materials processing. Better use CAM software. CAM, more about CNC manufacturing, how to use a spree, how to use CNC machines, hands-on working with machines and software, CNC machines. So I got out of that. A lot of people seem to want to do CNC and programming with CNC. Um, there was some interest in PLCs, microcomputers, and, and controlling manufacturing processes in general. Um, and then on the don't want to do, I think we were fairly consistent here. Um, don't want the class. Don't want this class to leave me by myself to figure things out. Looking forward to working in groups. Nothing. 
uh, prefer that CAD is largely omitted. Don't worry, we won't be talking about CAD. Well, we'll talk about it, but we won't be doing CAD. Um, want the class to be, don't want the class to be about history of community manufacturing. That is pretty easy. Don't want the class to be only theory. Um, don't want it to be all programming and no mechanical or hands-on. Don't really have an answer. How to use Miller lathe. So don't want to be about how to use Miller lathe. I've already done it in 1800. Um, really open to anything new that I'm willing to teach you. Business, don't want it to be about business entrepreneurship, about manufacturing, at least not entirely. Want to actually learn how to manufacture myself. Wouldn't like the class to be about how, I wouldn't like the class to be about how things are made and what types of processes are out there. A lot of classes end up going over this and I feel that information overload. Don't want the class to be a CAM only class. Um, really want to learn and have fun in the course. And the final assignment, so to speak. I'll have to read that one later to figure out what it means. <laughs> if you don't want to hear more about sleepovers, um, don't want to watch some machine or give PowerPoints about equipment. Don't want it to be mostly programming, learning things that are inapplicable to current processes. So you don't want history, um, material science, chemistry, and history. So, all right, so we're not gonna talk about the history of CAM. Um, we won't focus primarily on um, history or those things. So I don't think we have any conflicts with my ideas and your ideas there. If we look at the, um, the quiz two, so topics in quiz two was topics that you would like to learn about. And so I threw out a bunch of topics and I asked people to rank them uh, by how much interest they have in that topic. And then what I've done, um, is gone through and counted. So the uh, the first one was, are you interested in robotics and automation systems? And so if we look here, nine people gave this, or sorry, four people gave this a nine. Where's the maximum? So there seems to be sort of some moderate interest Nobody completely hated it, and a few people really liked it. CNC programming, so two and three axis milling. There seems to be a lot of interest in talking more about two and three axis milling, four and five axis milling. I need to copy the over. So four and five axis milling also seems to have quite a bit of interest. Um, set up an operation of machine tools, which I think I already figured out from the first quiz. That 14. So, so far, that's the highest interest level. Set up an operation of the machine tools. And automation of CNC programming. And so the highest number here is around an eight. 
All right, PLC programming. So the highest number there is about a five. So who in the class, use the, uh, use the participants thing, raise your hand if you don't know what a PLC is. How do I see the damn participants thing? There it is. So I got 12, 12 raised hands, 13 raised hands, don't know what a PLC is. Somebody who does know what a PLC is, you guys can put your hands down. Um, so that's about, that's about half the people don't know what a PLC is. Somebody that does know what a PLC is, want to jump in and let us know? Anybody? Half of you said you knew what a PLC was. All right, put your hands up again if you don't know what a PLC is. Uh, Amber, you don't have your hand up. It's a programmable logic controller. I use them in industrial robotics last term. Okay, cool. What, um, do you remember what, what makes a programmable logic controller special? No. No, it's just a thing and you use them in ro industrial robotics. Yeah, so, uh, so we'll, we will do a, a, definitely do a section on PLCs and programmable logic controllers. They, um, the way they're designed, they're, um, they're fairly hard to break. That makes them special. So they're very robust in controlling manufacturing processes. Um, and the way they process the code is very, very specific and very repeatable. So they're very easy to troubleshoot in industrial control operations. Um, but if you've ever, um, if you've ever used like a three-way light switch where there's like two switches that control one light bulb, um, or if you've ever used relays to turn things on and off, when a signal comes in, a relay operates on or off, it's, it's very similar to the way those PLCs operate. And um, so the, the Haas machines we use, for example, Inside the Haas controller is a PLC that controls how all the uh, how all the separate motors work and and all that. The, the programming down deep at the core level is PLCs. Um, factory automation systems, especially like bottling lines and things like that, are almost always controlled by PLCs. Um, and so we'll do a section on that for sure. All right. Um, So, all right, signal processing. Let's see. So, one person ranked it as a 10. Nobody ranked it as a zero. Okay. So there's a lot of a lot of topics that are possible based on the on the course description and based on what um, my understanding of computer aided manufacturing is. Five people put a ten out of ten for modeling manufacturing processes. Okay. Okay. 
just want to get the last couple here. All right, that's all of the columns. All right, so I want to look, scan across and look. Ah, want to do that. All right, so no, no high interest in quality. Um, I would make that one red. This seems to be some high interest in two, three, two, four, six, moderate interest. In inspection, we not do this one. Five, three, five, it seems to be some high interest in automation design. Design and fabrication of automation systems. Seems to have some high interests. Design and fabrication of CNC machine tools. Automation of manufacturing operations. This one the maybe column.
All right. So. All right, so let's see how many green columns there are. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Lemon green columns, one red column, three, four yellow columns. All right, so we've got what six weeks nominally does anybody really really want to have a lot of work to do on the last week of the term raise your hand in the participants if you really think we should have a big assignment due in the last week of the term okay me too i also don't think we should have a big assignment due on the uh, last week of the term we've got how many green columns did i say there were Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I've got eleven green columns. There's some overlap. Um, there's some overlap between programming and operation and setup of CNC machine tools. You guys would agree to that? I think I'll. I think I see that. Um, it seems like everybody wants to do some of that, except for the one person who said that they absolutely didn't want the class to be about that in the uh, in quiz one. Um, and we'll uh, we'll work around that as needed. Um, so I think the uh, the first couple of weeks here, let me get let's get back to the syllabus. get the syllabus in an editable state. Am I still sharing my screen? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me know if I accidentally share something super embarrassing, okay? I don't think I will, but who knows? Um, Come on. How about three eight two zero. Oh. There it is. All right. So this is the schedule page. So this is today. All right, so we don't have a topic for tomorrow. Seems everybody wants to talk about three and four axis scene, three, three, four and five axis CNC machining, right? And set up and programming for those things. That seemed to be a, a pretty common thread through the thing. So three, two, five. Now, tomorrow during the uh, during the class. So tomorrow is going to double as a Monday. I know I said on Mondays we'd be on Zoom and on Thursdays we'd be in the classroom. Tomorrow is going to be the Monday that takes the place of January 17th, since there is no class on Monday, January 17th. So tomorrow we're going to talk about three to five axis CNC machining, both uh, operation and programming of it. Um, and then next Thursday, the group presentations will be on that topic. Now, 
we have full access to the lab. We have Hayden as our TA. We can do hands-on CNC machining in the lab as a part of that. Um, if we're doing three to five axis machining, I actually think it's gonna take more than a week to, uh, to cover that fully. And so I think I wanna do two, two weeks on that topic. And um, so for the first, we'll figure out in class tomorrow what the, uh, what the topics will be for the uh, for the first two weeks of group presentations uh, for that, but I want to do two full weeks of three to five axis CNC machining. Can't spell. We go back. So the uh, the topic that naturally follows that and maybe builds into it, I think, is this automation of CNC programming. And so using the uh, using the CAM software to automatically create the code for the part that you're going to uh, to make. And so it, it, I don't really want this to be just me talking. So does anybody think this is a bad idea to do two weeks of CNC machining, programming and practice, followed by a week of automation of generating code for CNC machining? Speak up if you think this is a bad idea or type it in the chat. All right. Then uh, that's what I'm gonna put in the schedule. Are we gonna have our groups by like the end of this week? Uh, you'll have groups by the end of tonight or early tomorrow morning. So tomorrow morning before class starts, you'll know who your group mates are, what group you're in. I wanna go through those uh, Myers-Briggs results and also the, um, the answer to quiz number five as I decide who, who to put together in different groups. So we can try to get the groups so that they're sort of evenly, um, evenly distributed with personality types and skill sets. So we spend the first three weeks talking about CNC programming setup, operation, and automation of the programming. Um, what does somebody want to go into next based on our class results? Somebody make somebody uh, come up with an idea. So it's not just me. So the uh, the topics that we uh, that we liked here were industrial robotics and automation systems, CNC programming, CNC programming, setup and operation of CNC machines, automation of CNC programming, PLC programming, modeling of manufacturing processes, automation of manufacturing operations, which kind of is the same as the robotics and manufacturing operation, automation. Design and fabrication, <coughs> design and fabrication of machine tools, design and fabrication of automation systems, and automation design. So somebody make an argument for one of those being the next topic after uh, three weeks of CNC machining.
continuity. Maybe do PLC programming, and then that could lead into things like industrial robotics and automation systems. I, I think that's a good flow. Anybody else have a comment? And so there's going to be some overlap between PLCs and manufacturing automation. So some of the groups may extend that PLC for a second week. Some of the groups may not. Um, so does this sound like a plan then? Three and five axis CNC machining on Thursday and the following, the, the next Monday. So for two weeks, programming automation the following week, PLCs and programming the week after that, manufacturing automation and robotics for the last two weeks of the term. All right, so what, what did we miss from the topics that people wanted to do? I think design and machine tools, I think might have been on there too. So we missed, yeah. So we missed modeling of manufacturing processes. Design and fabrication of CNC machine tools. I think we can work that in a little bit in the three to five axis uh, programming. If we work on some understanding of how the machines are put together in order to be able to program them more efficiently and better. And also we can work that in, in the automation um, and robotic stuff at the end. So I think there's a way to work that into the class. Um, so, so here I got design and fabrication of automation systems. And so four people had that as a 10, six people had it as a nine. So 10, so a third of the class roughly had that super high. I think there's a way to work this as one of the automation projects. So if I, I and I, I know who had which answers, so I can sort those people together, put you guys in a group together, and then focus that group project on that at the end of the term. Uh, so I don't think there's anything that people really were excited about that we left out, is there? Is there something that you put on your must have list that we didn't cover in this plan? And I, I'll go back through these um, and figure that out too. But must have, a lot of people had must have something about CNC machining. I think we're gonna cover that plenty. Um, we will definitely do 
in lab activities so that it's not all theory. I think is a good plan. My, uh, and my, my goal for this is that we're doing the class that you guys are gonna get benefit out of. I could easily just go through that uh, course description and I could come up with some lecture topics and I could lecture and do death by PowerPoint all the way through. Um, I've actually done that for this class before and it's boring as hell for me. And I imagine it's boring as hell for the students in the class. So, uh, so I'm hoping that this new way of doing the class works out well. We've got about five minutes left. Is there anything pressing that we need to talk about before the end of the two hours? All right, so if you're watching the replay um, or if you haven't finished that quiz four or quiz five yet, if you're here live, make sure you get that done by the end of the day today. Um, if you're not able to get that done by the end of the day, reach out to me just so I know that you're still doing it. Um, and for the person who's not yet registered for the class, make sure you follow up with the registrar and get in the class. Um, I will assume that that's going to happen and I will go through the results and put you in a group. Um, and then we will have as people, if people do join the class from the wait list over the next couple of days, we will get them in the groups. Um, to do that but i'll have you guys assigned to a group by tomorrow morning uh, when we start class tomorrow morning we will be talking about three to five axis cnc machining and um, the the key things that i think are important to introduce that topic and then i will have you guys break out into uh into your groups either in breakout rooms here in the zoom or you can leave the meeting and go form your own zoom meeting um to do something. I'll have to figure out what that's going to be between now and tomorrow morning. And then we'll get back together and we'll figure out what the projects are. All right. Is that a plan? I'll see you guys tomorrow morning, bright and early on Zoom again. Normally Thursdays will be in the classroom, but tomorrow Thursday will be on Zoom again. It will double as next Monday when we don't have class. Uh, after that, I will see you in the classroom on the Thursday after that, a week from tomorrow, unless you're sick, in which case, please don't come to the classroom and get the rest of us sick. See you guys tomorrow. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Hi, Professor.